times that in the mountains we forget that we have to lean on the Lord. And then when we find ourselves in the valley again, or we struggle a little, but we always have this blessed assurance that when you are his and he is yours, you are never alone. There is an assurance that comes with your salvation that never ever wanes, never ever changes, never ever falls away. He is ever faithful. And as we spring, sing this song, Blessed Assurance, I hope that your heart remembers and rejoices in that simple fact. You're never alone. Blessed Assurance.
an old hymn. Trust and obey. Yes. This, this hymn, Trust and Obey, actually is the guidepost for us. The trust part helps us obey, but we only obey when we choose to listen to the Holy Spirit. We reject the enemy when he speaks to us, when he whispers to our ear, when he pokes at our insecurities or twists our anger or frustration, when we allow him room to cause any kind of damage to us. The obeying part, that's the hard part. The trusting part seems a little easier, but the obey part's definitely a challenge. It always has been, it always will be. This is why we lean into the trust. For without the trust, you cannot obey. And the obedience will not be the best obedience if you do not trust. So please join us in singing our final song, Trust and Obey.
Today's scripture reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Thank you, Rob. Just one verse this morning from this text. The Apostle John has been writing to us about what it means to be a Christian. He's concerned for the people at Ephesus. He's concerned for the people at the other churches. He wants to bring clarification to them about what it means to walk with the Lord. Walk in the light. Walk in truth. Walk in love. And now today he talks about living in Him. Having a relationship with God and God living in you really a remarkable thing we're going to talk about today. Let's pray together as we begin. Heavenly Father, we know that we are in your presence. We know that angels are all around. We know that we're opening up your holy book, your words, your thoughts, through your apostles, your prophets. We're so grateful that we can recount these words, Lord, and understand what it means to be your child what it means to live in you and walk in you. We're so grateful for this clarification and for these commands. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 24 with me as you open up your Bibles, open up your tablets. Words of the Apostle John, words of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what John says. Those who obey those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. John, what are you saying? That obedience is important. He's been saying that throughout this entire letter. As we have looked at every phrase and every paragraph, he talks about the importance of obedience. And now, this is kind of a final statement in these words from his sermon. Here at the end of chapter 3, he says, those who obey his commandments, they live inside him and he inside them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Holy Spirit that he has given us. The Apostle John is letting us know that obedience to God's commands are truly important. They're important because Jesus wants to live in you. And he wants to live through you. What are those commands that he's been reciting and telling us for the past number of weeks, the past number of paragraphs? Let's review now and go back, because this is kind of the end of his statements. If we obey his commands, it's important to know what those commands are. And we see verse 22, the, the second half, he says, because we obey his commands, and do what pleases him. That's what obedience is, doing what pleases God. And some of those commands that John has been talking about is that we should love in word and in tongue, not only in word and in tongue, but also in action and in truth. Verse 18. I'm going to recount some of these commands that's so important for Christ to live in us and through us. He says, let's not just live in word and tongue, but in actions and in truth. He says here that we need to love our brother, because anyone who is in God needs to love his brother. Verse 10, same chapter. Those who obey God's command do not keep on sinning. Verse 6, chapter 3. Those who obey his commands are confident <coughs> Before the throne are confident when he appears. Verse 28, chapter 2. Those who obey his commands acknowledge the Son and acknowledge the Father as divine 
as God. Verse 23, chapter 2. Those who obey his command walk under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Those who obey his commands have overcome the evil one. Verse 14, chapter 2. Those who obey his commands know that their sins are forgiven. Chap verse 12, chapter 2. Those who obey his commands have been made complete in him, complete in love. Those who obey his commands walk as Jesus did. Verses 5 and 6, chapter 2. Those who obey his commands loves his brother as he loves himself. Verse 9, chapter 2. Those who obey his commands know that the righteous one has atoned for their sins. Those who obey his commands, verse 9, chapter 1, confess their sins and know they are forgiven. Those who obey his commands, verse 7, chapter 1, walk in the light as he is in the light. Walk in the fellowship as he is in fellowship with us. And the blood of Jesus Christ purifies us from all sins. Those who walk in his commands walk in light. Those who walk in his commands walk in joy. Those who walk in his commands walk in fellowship. Those who walk in his commands believe in the Father and the Son. And Paul says similar things. John just says, if you believe in the Son, believe in the Father. And those who I live inside obey my commands. Obedience is very important. And if we walk in his commands, and he lives in us, we know that he lives in us because of the Holy Spirit. Because of the Holy Spirit. If we look at a description of the Holy Spirit, it's a good thing to evaluate ourselves by knowing if he's there, knowing if God is living in us, knowing if we're being obedient children. Because he says that we'll know this by the Holy Spirit. And we know that Jesus said to his people that the Holy Spirit will come and be your comforter, your guide, and guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost to empower the church and give them power for living. Paul lets us know in Galatians, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us should show up in certain ways. Chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified their flesh, crucified their human nature with its passions and its desire. And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. If we live in Him, and He lives in us, then those things should be true of us. The fruit of the Spirit, peace, gentleness, kindness, long-suffering, a forgiving spirit. We should have a changed life, a different life. We should be like little Christ, little Christians in the world in which we live. And John says the way for that to happen is obedience. Obedience to the commands I just rehearsed. Obedience to walking in the light. Obedience to walking in fellowship, walking in love, walking in truth. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. You know that Jesus wants to live in you. But he needs you to cooperate. He needs you to obey. He wants to produce the fruit of the Spirit in you, which I just recounted. But he needs for you to obey him. Obey walking in the truth, in the light, in love, in fellowship. And if you're going to love your brother, you have to be with your brothers and sisters. If you truly love them, you want to be with them and serve them. <coughs> Use your spiritual gift. Pray with them. Minister to them. If you're going to love and walk in the commandments, then you need to be with your brothers and sisters. You need to be in the body of Christ. 
And then Jesus wants to live through you. Jesus Christ said something very similar to this in the Gospel of John. John records, and this is where John gets this idea about walking in Him, living in Him, and we do that by obeying Him. This was Jesus' own attitude. Listen to what Jesus said. This is God in the flesh, the Son of God. And John heard these words, recorded these words in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, and then brings it up again in 1 John, which we're recounting today, about this, I will be in you, and you will be in me. If you obey my commandments, obviously obedience is really important. Jesus said it this way, and John remembers these words. That's why he wrote these words again. It's found in John chapter 15, beginning with verse 9. As the Father, Jesus' words, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. It's a love relationship. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Jesus saying that to his disciples. And now John repeating it in his letter. And so when I read John's words and saw how powerful they are, it's like, wow, John, that's a big statement. If you obey my commands, you walk in my love. If you obey my commands, I live in you. <coughs> Jesus wants to live through you, but he needs for you to obey him. Obey the things I just recounted, that John just recounted. Walking in truth. Walking in love. Walking in fellowship. Walking in the light. Jesus says... As the Father has loved me, I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Jesus is saying, this is how I live. I obey my Father's commandments. And that's how I remain in his love, remain in the fellowship, remain in his will, remain in his purpose for me. You know, the Father's purpose for Jesus' Son in obeying His Father's commands was to go to that cross and be cruelly treated by His own people, the Jews, be cruelly treated by the Romans, whipped and scourged and punched and ridiculed and spit on and have a crown of thorns pushed down and be nailed to wooden beams and be crucified while his blood ran out nearly naked in front of the nation of Israel and in front of his holy city. That was God the Father's commandment and obedience for Jesus to fulfill. And what did Jesus say at the Garden of Gethsemane the night before that happened? Father, this cup of your wrath poured out on me, your son can pass from me, that would be great. But if not, your will be done. Jesus wanted to drink the wrath of his father for the sake of others, that they might be saved. That's an amazing thing that Jesus did for us. That was how Jesus remained in the father's love, by obeying the father's will and going to the cross. Look what he says. Just as I have obeyed my Father's command and remain in his love, I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid out his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. Wow. Jesus said, you are my friends if you do what I command. Greater love has no one than this that he laid down his life for his friends. Jesus did that for us. Jesus did that for you. Laid down his life for you. I no longer call you servants because the servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I call you friends. For everything I learned from my father, I've made known to you. Jesus says here that I remain in my Father's love because I do what he commands. And now, 
John, in this section today, is saying the same thing to us about our relationship to the Father, about our relationship to the Son. Those who obey my commands live in Him, and He in them. Obedience, very important. Obedience. You know what? I think it is the missing ingredient for many Christians. I think it's the missing ingredient for many Christian churches in America. They have the fear of God in your heart. To wake up each day and know that God is looking on you. To wake up each day and know that you have a responsibility to walk with Him. To read His Word. To have fellowship with Him in prayer. To have fellowship with the sons and daughters of God. To have fellowship in the house of God. To go to the house of God and worship. Go to the house of God and pray. Sometimes Christians in America, we think it's like an option. Yeah. You know, if I'm not too busy. Right now I'm really distracted. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes there's seasons where we're down, seasons where we're gone. But obedience is incredibly important. To have fellowship with God and for Him to live inside you. See, that was the key that John brought up. You are in me and I am in you if you obey what I command. And then you will have proof by the Holy Spirit. And that's why I read that list of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You can evaluate your life. And that's what this letter is about. It's about evaluating your relationship with God. Evaluating your salvation. Do you possess it? Do you have the peace and joy and love and strength of the Holy Spirit? Are you obeying Him and confident before the throne? Remember... That's what John had said last week. Do you have confidence before him? Do you have confidence when he returns? And so as I studied these words and studied these lines, I thought, oh my goodness. John is talking about a Christianity that's hard to see in our nation. Sometimes hard to see in our church. He's talking about a Christianity that's obedient. That's spirit-filled. That has Jesus living through you. Because you obey his commands and do what pleases him. Verse 22. And he says if that's true, then we have confidence before the throne he talked about last week. 21. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, they're not filled with guilt. They're not filled with excuses. They're not filled with worldliness. They're not filled with sinfulness. But they're filled with gratefulness, praise, prayer, and obedience. Then verse 21, we have confidence before the throne. And we receive anything that we ask. That's interesting. That's a promise. I mean, I go before the throne and Jesus, God the Father, actually hears me and answers me. Why? Because I'm an obedient child. Because I have confidence when I go in before him. Because my heart doesn't condemn me. I know the Holy Spirit's living inside me. Is on being obedient, an obedient child. I have much more confidence today at 62 than I did 10 years ago at 52 or 20 years ago at 42. I have confidence before the throne. Why? Because I'm so brave, I'm squeaky clean? No. I've just decided I'm going to live like him. I'm going to obey his commands. I'm going to obey his call. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to discipline myself towards godliness, discipline myself towards service, towards sacrifice, towards prayer, towards study, towards God's people, toward God's house. And if all of God's children did that, this would be a strong place. We are growing in strength. I see God bringing people here. Let me give you an illustration about this. I've given this illustration before. It's simple, but it's what... John is talking about. If there are children who are obedient and cooperative and respectful towards their parents, they're more confident to interact with their parents. And their parents are more readily to obey their requests, right? I remember when I was about to go into junior high school, I was in sixth grade. I was like 11 years old. 
I desperately wanted a Schwinn banana seat stingray bike <laughs> with a sissy bar <laughs> and long handlebars. <laughs> Desperate for a new one. I usually used old hand-me-down bikes that didn't really look cool or fit my frame. And, and, but I was not being very respectful or obedient to my parents. And I remember I kept asking my father, like we can ask our Heavenly Father, I asked my dad, Pastor John, you know, I, for my birthday, my 12th birthday, I got to have a stingray, brand new one, no more used ones from the junk pile <laughs> that you piece together. And I look like a goof driving down the street. I want something cool and fast and new. I remember my dad sent me down with his 11-year-old boy and said, Troy, let's talk. You know, I'd like to give you that. This is what he said. I'd like to give you that bike. But you don't deserve it. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? Well, let's, let's start. Let's have a basic. Let's have a man-to-man -man talk. I remember we sat in the bathroom, actually. <laughs> let's close the doors in the bathroom. He said, Troy, are you respectful to your mother? Are you getting good grades? Because the last two grade cards I saw... You were struggling with a C minus average. What I saw was C's and D's. You're not focused on school. You're not focused on your homework. You're disrespectful to your mother. You're not doing your homework. You're not getting good grades. We have to keep reminding you to do the chores. Take out the trash. Go clean up the dog poop in the backyard. <laughs> and so here's what we're going to do. And my dad and I wrote on a chart which we put on the wall in front of the toilet so he knew that I'd see it every day. That's what you've got to do with 11-year-old boys. And on that chart, it says you've got to get your grades up to a B. You've got to respect your mother at all times. And you have to do your chores without us asking or complaining. And, if, and then my dad said, if you'll do that for the rest of the year, on your birthday in the summer, July 2nd, you will get a brand new Schwinn Stingray bike with a banana seat, and you can pick it, pick it up. Hmm. And to let you know, I got my grades up. To let you know, I was more respectful. To let you know, I just got in the routine of doing my chores without my mom bugging me or without complaining about it. I started to become a little man <laughs> instead of a lost boy. And on my birthday, my 12th birthday, I got a brand new shrink with a banana seat and a sissy bar. I picked out a purple one nice. with sparkles in the paint. Yeah. And it had a white seat. And when I went cruising down the road, mm, it was a different feeling. Why do I bring that up? Because by the end of the year, I had more confidence with my mom and my dad because I was being a respectful, obedient child, doing my chores and being obedient, obeying their commands. And therefore, when I went before the throne of my earthly father and asked for something that I really wanted, he was more ready to listen. I, and I remember him telling me, you know what, Troy, you don't deserve that life. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He was right. Now, that's a simple illustration, but that's precisely what the Apostle John's talking about. Do you obey his commandments? Do you live in a relationship with him? He's in you. You're in him. There's respect. There's a mutual relationship. Do you do what he commands? Do you have confidence before the throne is what he just said? And then John also says that statement that we talked about last Sunday, and I really feel like I didn't do that justice. When he said, are you confident before his throne? Are you confident before the throne of God? And then weeks earlier we talked about, are you confident when he appears? Or will you be ashamed? And I started reading these things from John. I'm like, oh my goodness. He's talking about a living, breathing, respectful, responsible, engaged relationship with Almighty God. And not to be ashamed when he shows up. And they have confidence before the throne. Because we obey him. What he asks, what he says. That's why you need to know this. That's why you need to read this. 
And I think American Christians, we say, well, you know, God's up there and Jesus loves me and I'm saved and so I'm going to do my own thing. Go my own way. I'm not going to read your commands, obey your commands. It's a lot. You're asking a lot. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I walk in the way of Jesus. I don't know if I want to carry the cross. I don't know what if, I don't know if I want to discipline myself for godliness. I don't know if I want to memorize your word. I don't know if I want to sit with Christians and pray. Boring. I don't have time to read God's word. I don't understand what it says. That's a bunch of lame stuff that American Christians say. And when I read the words of John, he says the exact opposite of that. Obey God's commands. Learn to, what are those? What does he say throughout the whole letter, First John? Learn to love one another. Learn to walk in fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And if you're going to learn to love them and serve them and walk in fellowship, it means you need to show up and be with them. You can't live the Christian life out there on your own. Walk in the light as he is in the light. Walk in love. Walk in his commands. Walk in the truth. I'll end with this. You know this whole story started. I went back and read the opening chapters of Genesis. About the first couple. Adam and Eve. First four chapters. I felt led to go there by the Spirit. You know that's how this whole thing started. Mm -hmm. Disobedience. Disobedience. Adam and Eve disobeyed God's voice, Jesus' voice. Jesus created them from the earth of the ground and breathed life into them. And then he said, these four things, these five things, Subdue the earth. Rule over the animals. Multiply. Reproduce and multiply. And tend the garden. That sounds like a father giving his children instruction, right? Mm -hmm. Be fruitful, multiply. Subdue the earth. Tend the garden. Rule over the animals, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea is what God said. What number five was? And don't touch the tree. <laughs> so, what did they do? Instead of obeying their heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and tending the garden, see, they haven't even had kids yet. Be fruitful, multiply. Take care of the animals, subdue the earth, rule. I got stuff for you to do. You need to obey me. This is your territory. Instead, they wandered over by the tree because of the enemy. And what happened? Relationship broken. No longer walking with him, walking in him, listening to him, obeying him, and not getting any more blessings, losing blessings. I thought it was quite brilliant of the Holy Spirit to inform me of that this week. He said, you know, Troy, this was always a problem with my creation. They don't obey me. They don't hear my voice. What happened? Banished from the garden. And the scripture says he put a cherubim on either side of the garden, guarding the way to the tree of life, lest they eat from it and live forever as broken, disobedient, rebellious, evil people. I can't let you live forever anymore. Relationship loss, paradise loss. Why? Disobedience. What has it got to do with John's saying today? Same thing for you. Are you like Adam and Eve? Eating from the tree of evil, of the world, of sinfulness, shame? Are you obeying what he said to you? For Adam and Eve, it was tend the garden, subdue the earth, rule over the fish of the sea. Be fruitful, multiply, start a family, be godly, walk with me. Do you know that God walked with them in the cool of the evening and talked with them face to face? And they lost all of that because they thought they knew that. Powerful, isn't it? So John says, if you obey my commands, Jesus speaking through John, I will live in you and you will be in me. 
and you will have the Holy Spirit. And when you come before the throne, ask for whatever you'd like. And when I show up, you won't be ashamed. These are the things that he's saying. Pretty powerful. I read this and I'm like, wow, that is some serious Christianity. <laughs> that kind of Christianity would revolutionize the church in America. Heavenly Father, we're grateful today that we can look at your words, take them seriously. Powerful words from John. Powerful words from you, Jesus. You, Father, you, Holy Spirit. These are the words of the Bible. If we obey your commands, you will be in us. If we obey your commands, we won't be ashamed when you show up. If we obey your commands, we have confidence before the throne. You're asking for an honest, to goodness, respectful, responsible relationship with your children. It was in Genesis chapter 2, 3, and 4, and it's in 1 John chapter 1, 2, and 3. Same, same idea. Lord, help us because we're weak people. Help us by the power of the Holy Spirit to make that change in us. And I've learned from the scripture and from experience that the more you obey, the more you're filled with the Spirit. And shame shrinks away. We're grateful. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Pray with me as we leave. Pray with me in your heart. Lord, pray with me out loud with your voice. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.